A demonstration for today. The demonstration for today is how to fussy cut a flap. So um, this is a flap that I have not fussy cut um, because it's kind of an all over design. But what happens when you have a bag and a flap that you want to continue a design from the flap onto the body of the bag? So for example, perhaps your fabric has a horse on it. You want the head of the horse to be on your flap and the body of the horse to continue on to the body of the bag. How do you do that? So I have sort of a demonstration to show you that and it's kind of reverse engineering. So let me show you in the side camera and I prepared a couple of step outs just so I could explain this. And what I've prepared is a flap from one of my patterns. This is from the accordion bag pattern and it's just a flap and a body of the bag. So again, um, if you're working with a bag and let me cut over to the front view camera again just so I can show you another bag that I've pulled out. So if you're working with a bag with a flap that's flat that doesn't continue onto the back of the bag but rather just attaches onto the front of the bag like my hyacinth bag. This one was really easy to fussy cut because I just cut sort of twins like the flap and the body of the bag um, using the same um, designs as the guideline. But what do you do if you have a flap that wraps around from the back of the bag like my Oreo bag? So it's really hard in this case to decide where to continue on the design and um, so with that extra explanation, I'll, I'll cut back over to the flap again. So I'm using one of the ladies from De La Luna and I wanted to continue this design with the damask onto the body of the bag. So I went ahead and per the pattern instructions, I assembled my flap by sewing the exterior fabric to the lining as called for in the instructions. And because my flap closes with a magnetic snap, I went ahead and attached that as well. So obviously you'll wanna use the same interfacing as called for in the pattern. I skipped my interfacing for this demo just because I wanted to get right to the nitty gritty. Um, but this is the fully assembled flap with that magnetic snap already installed. Okay, so the body of my bag is actually a rectangle. Um, but if your body of your bag is a pattern piece, um, you'll proceed in the same manner. So I went ahead and transferred my pattern piece and this is for the main panel. So this is gonna be the front of the bag. So I transferred this to a bit of material that I could see through. So this is actually um, Pellon True Grid and it's um, a product made by Pellon and each of these squares is one inch. So I find it really helpful. I like using this when I'm transferring pattern pieces or saving pattern pieces because it doesn't tear, but I can still write on it, um, write, write down the names of pattern pieces and so on. So I have a bolt of this at home and I really like using this product anyway. I cut out my main panel pattern piece according to the pattern instructions on this bit of material. And I also read ahead in my pattern and I marked where um, the, the female half of the magnetic snap will be just so I can reference that when I'm figuring out how to fussy cut the body of the bag to go along with my flap. Okay, so I'm gonna put this true grid to the side for just a second and I'm gonna pull out the rest of my fabric. So obviously I've cut out my flap and assembled it already. I'm gonna find an area of the fabric that has that same design that my flap does. Okay, so that's the same lady. And I'm just gonna pull that fabric up so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so I know this is really busy, but um, here's my flap right here. I'm gonna sort of orient the flap so that it's on top of the fabric and the design is sort of continued. So I'm looking for especially this moth right here so I can make sure that that design is continued and I'm also checking the side of the fabric. Okay, so when you've got it in a good spot where you feel like the design is continuous, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out that true grid piece once again. So I'm gonna gently leave my flap in the same position but kind of fold it out of the way just so I can slide that true grid piece inside. Okay, so again, I'm keeping in mind where that snap will be installed according to my little marking right there. And I'm gonna pull my flap back down and I'm gonna try to connect that center of the magnetic snap with the center of that red marking. So I'm gonna keep adjusting it till I find that it's directly on top of, the snap is directly on top of the marking. Okay, so that looks like a good spot. The reason that I wanted to use um, an item or sort of a 
fabric that I could see through is so while I'm moving my true grid piece around I can make sure my flap is still right on the design so the design is continuous okay so when I'm happy with everything and I make sure my true grid piece is not crooked or wonky I can go ahead and remove the flap and I'm gonna actually use this true grid to draw or rotary cut out my pattern piece so this is actually going to be the front of the bag um, I as you saw before I marked where my magnetic snap was going to be I made a little hole with my seam ripper and I'm also going to transfer that placement for the magnetic snap on my fabric so while I'm assembling my bag obviously after I've cut out this piece attached it to interfacing while I'm assembling everything I have that mark there so I can keep checking while I'm working to make sure that for sure is where I need to install that magnetic snap so as the bag comes together because you went through those steps to make sure everything was fussy cut properly the front of your bag should be a continuation of the design on the flap as opposed to um, a totally different area of the fabric and not a continuation so hopefully that made sense I know it was a little bit of reverse engineering like I mentioned but um, hopefully that's helpful to someone as far as fussy cutting I've seen some great fussy cut bags in the Facebook group um, one of a one of the particular bags that comes to mind is an Oriole bag that Melissa made and she had a beautiful peacock on her Oriole bag flap and the design was continued onto the body of the bag perfectly so um, good luck experimenting with your fussy cutting um, fussy cutting one thing I will say about fussy cutting it does take extra fabric um, so if you're not sure um, about the fussy cutting you might want to buy a little bit more than the uh, pattern calls for because especially with large-scale designs like that De La Luna print um, as you can see because I had to move that flap around and get it in just the right spot um, there was a little bit more of fabric waste um, with that particular fabric so just keep that in mind when you're fussy cutting Okay, so I have a question for you. Have you cuss, fussy cut things before? So maybe you fussy cut more of a simple design like that hyacinth bag that I showed you before. Um, perhaps you're fussy cutting for some hand sewing or for a quilt. So whatever you're fussy cutting for, if you've tried it before, let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to know.